brought this joint. All right, so uh, good morning, creative. Uh, so today, uh, I'm going to be talking actually, probably going to be like my, this is actually like my first talking um, episode where I actually just talked and not trying or did anything. And I wanted to use this video to actually address some of the questions that um, were raised by a young designer. So I'll give just some background. I, last year, I, I threw open, uh, I threw a question open and <clears throat> I asked, you know, what were the frustrations that young designers and like starting out designers were actually facing? And I felt that maybe they do could that be like laid out there and um, professionals alike would be able to counsel them and then guide them and you know, provide some very, very valuable, actionable insights as to some of the questions. So um, I, the, the, the question actually had like 225 comments. A lot of people watched that. There was a lot of banter, there was a lot of talk, there was a lot of conversations that, that actually went into this. So I am here to address to address some of them because um, I think after like the first 10, 20 comments, it just kept on following a particular theme. And most of them, yeah, they pretty much just followed like a particular theme. So um, here we go. All right, so this question is from, or this, um, this feedback is from Ayodeji Oyekomi, and he says um, one of his frustrations is not getting what you picture in your head. Um, hmm. this, this, this is actually one of the easier things to do. If you want to, if you want to get better, whatever it is you're doing, maybe as a 3D modeler or as a motion designer or as a UI UX designer, I think it all boils down to consistency and practice. You have to practice every day. You have to, you have to work every day. You have to dedicate your time to continue improvement. So I'll tell you a story. A um, couple of years back, I belonged to university. You know, I actually dropped out of university. I actually dropped out of university. You know, and um, one of my very, very close friends, is a, he's a producer. He told me that, look, if you really want to get good at this thing that you're doing, like, here's what I think you should do. Practice daily, every day for a year and see, you know, see what comes of it. And uh, I had I had like this big, this piece of desktop computer that was like Pentium 2, I like, I like 128 gig RAM and like 40 gig hard drive space and geez, like things that, things that we, 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 we should realize these days, that was what I was running on. There was no like, no, there was no electricity or there was hardly ever electricity and I didn't have access to internet. So if I wanted to go up route, I carry like a bunch of um, no, we didn't have flash drives either. I will carry like a bunch of uh, floppy disks, and I go to the cyber cafe, and I will see web pages. <laughs> so if a web page was like very very long, it was good for me. But if they broke the if they broke the web page or whatever content there, I was reading into like four pages. I had to download that page like four times. But that's that's the size. I what I'm what I'm getting at is. I, there was a significant improvement to my quality of work. There was a significant improvement to my quality of work. Uh, well, it's not like it skyrocketed because there were some frustrations. But I think you just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep updating yourself. Just keep doing it on a daily basis. And I believe that you know, you begin in no time you begin to see the improvement yourself. All right. So, um, I already know you're is actually a 3D modeler or he's starting to 3D modeler after his time. This question was asked. This question was asked. Yeah, November twenty second, nineteen twenty eighteen. That was last year. All right. So, um, another question or another uh, feedback. This is from Bio David Sim Tobiloba. He said, understanding his frustration is trying to understand what top bosses are doing that he isn't doing that gets them good clients. Well, um, someone actually did highlight and say uh, networking, and networking is actually quite quite good, you know. But your network is pretty much useless if you can't market yourself properly, or if you can't position yourself properly, 
or you can't easily demonstrate value to the people that you're trying to network with or that you're trying to market yourself to. So, um, so if, 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 in terms of networking, you can go to like all these uh, lots of events. You can go to like designer events. You can go to tech conferences. That you know, depending on your market, or you know, basically go to places where your customers will most likely be. You know. And then by the time you get there, you make friends with them. Go, go armed. Go with like for all your resources. Go with your cards. You know, go with some of samples of your work. Go, you know, go with things that you can easily share. Go with things that you can easily share. Uh, and uh, have like a 10 second, 20 second pitch about what you do. The shorter the pitch and the more easier it is to understand, then just, then just you, you, you know, the, the better for you, basically. So, um, so you can, you can go for like this event. So going for the events and getting to, getting to know people is one, one half of the story. Selling yourself, yeah, that's the other half. So, um, you go to an event, you share a couple of cards, you introduce yourself to a couple of people, and you say, okay, my name is Leslie, I'm a product designer, this is a, these are some of the things I have done, I did XYZ for this for this brand, and I um, they were able to scale X number of times, increasing their revenue, you know, by X percentage, I was able to do this solution for this for XYZ brand, which helped to cut down redundancy signs, you know, you know just, just try, and don't just, don't just show, that you're good, demonstrate to them that you can provide value. And I think, you know, once people, once your clients can identify value, they will be more than willing to pay top of money for you to hire you or you know, to engage your services. All right, so this is a, um, so this is from Cheche. Is it aside from the fact of PT slowing down and lack of internet, man, that one, can't help you man. that is between you and you know you you you've got to you've got to do whatever it is that you can i mean it requires a lot of patience i mean especially if you're not particularly financially advantaged but it requires a lot of patience saving a lot of money doing a lot of jobs um odd jobs just to put the money together but i think with the right kind of dedication you can actually get into the gear that you want and not and not have to experience that that kind of frustration when you, while you're working. He said, um, aside the fact of PT slowing down the lack of internet, mine will be charging for projects or work and making the client understand that you must not have a plate of food in a logo because it's a restaurant. <laughs> really? Like, really? Oh, come on, man. Oh, this 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 thing got me, man. Okay. Um. Where where do I even begin from? Where do I even begin from? <sighs> Damn it! I'm not sure there's a real answer to this. Well, okay, not that there's there's no real answer to this. Um. So yes, granted. As, as a designer, let's say, for example, you have a logo designer or a brand identity designer. Uh, you have to show, besides the fact that you actually have to show value that, okay, yes, I, clearly I do what I'm doing. Um, and then um, you also have to take time to educating your clients because, and it's really if it's a client who is not really design oriented, who is probably um, who probably doesn't know much about our industry or how, how things actually work, you have to handhold them. And it's the ugly frog you have to swallow. There is nothing you can do about it because if you don't have that conversation with your client, if you don't tell them, that, okay, these are the steps, um, show them examples, show them samples, give them, you just try your best to sell your ideas to them or to sell your vision for their product or for their brand to them as best as possible and let them make the final decision. Uh, but then again, there will always be that one client who will have wicked shumul behavior, and quite frankly, there's nothing you can do about it. So, you end up giving them what they want. Just make sure that whenever you do that, don't put your name on that. 
<laughs> just don't put your name on it. <laughs> it's not gonna make it to your portfolio. <laughs> All right, let's All right, move let's on to another, another one. one. Um, so, 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 let's even let's 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 some of the feedback that was even written here. Um, welcome to the industry, Honora. Ah, Honora, really, dude, dude, dude. You need to incorporate, incorporate the habits. Victor Obeng says you need to copy. Victor Obeng says you need to incorporate the habit of explaining the concepts behind your logos. Um. True. True, you have to. But I'm I'm of the school of thought, and I believe this is a personal thing. I'm of the school of thought that if you have to explain your logo to your clients at first time he sees it, you're not doing your job. He has to get it. Like he has to get the idea once. You know, he, he has to be like real quick. Yeah, no, well not right, real quick. But he has to look at it, and he has to get the idea or the vision. The moment he lays his eyes on it. So this is, you probably have seen me, yeah. So I just outed myself and said, you know, sometimes when the logo is top notch, you, do, you, need, you don't need to explain. You know, that's true. But I, yeah, it's good for you to understand the difference between like sharing your idea and sharing your vision and then having to explain the logo. I mean, if, if you have to explain, jeez, that's what the challenge is. Um... Oh yeah, another popular thing that that the, another popular trend that a lot of people or conception that people actually have, which I think is a, like pretty poor misconception. You're going to present a logo. Uh, uh, when you're going to present designs to a client, you have to show the client like like five, six, seven options. I call bullshit on that. Don't do that. More op more design options, more logo options. You're literally just creating more problems for yourself. Yeah, and you're doing your best to confuse your clients. So this is what I think. If um so Tola Labi, Tola Labi made a very, very profound statement some like many years ago, I think like black blank white sheets. He made a very, very profound statement. He said, you know, he'd rather commit all his time and effort into creating one awesome logo than creating seven just okay logos and you know it, I, I really felt that so if i'm ever going to create work for a client or anything uh, and he's probably demanding for more options I'll, I'll make sure that i do a really super awesome logo one super awesome logo then i just did a man logo i know in my heart of heart it's actually a man logo but i'm not i mean clearly i'm not going to tell him but more often than not i only just need to show him the first really awesome logo and he just picks it why because it speaks to him it does its work as effectively as a logo and you know he doesn't really need to think too much this logo works wrong with it so um so chichi goes on goes on here to say i don't do more than one option i rather just give my all in one just that some clients want something so sophisticated apparently that they are paying so soft, sophisticated apparently because they are paying and when I, when i try to and when I explain, some understand and some just take it. Oh God, this this is pretty difficult to read. <clears throat> just that some clients want something so sophisticated, sophisticated. Apparently, just because they are paying, and when I explain, some understand and some just make it seem like I don't want to listen to them. I try my best, but stay open-minded because sometimes what the client wants might turn out to be good as well after some fine-tuning. You should also be aware of that. You should also you should also know when to step back and actually listen to the client. Because, well, the truth is, more often than not, you are listening to the client and, well, the client came to meet you in confidence that you are able to deliver and you're delivering, yes. And well, if they knew what they were talking about, they wouldn't come to meet you. But sometimes you come across that client that actually knows what they want and they will communicate that to you. So you have to listen. You don't just go and just you overshoot. Even those that don't know what they want, you have to sit with them and listen to them and drill down and narrow down and have lots of conversations until that. And all this, all this is before you even start designing until, or probably even after. Until you're able to identify that one thing that 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 suits them, 
or at least closely matches what they want and they are in agreement with it it is fine all right few clients electrical issues all right so well if it's the issue of few clients it also boils down to um how you network or how you actually market yourself always have your portfolio ready it's very key have your portfolio ready so you know um so and market the shit out of that portfolio market the shit out of that portfolio so um I will post this thread so that everyone can actually take a look at and like read it and communicate with some of the industry heads that actually responded. People like Yorks, Yorks lent his uh, superior knowledge. Um, Onura was also here to actually help help out. Um, all right, so someone said dealing with work and cl personal clients. Um, hmm. So I think this boils down to you being able to strike a sensible balance um between your work life and your side hustle that's if you're into that there's some creatives that probably earn well enough to actually not bother by side hustle some creatives regardless of what they're earning don't even bother by side hustle and there are some of some like me <clears throat> huh? who really can't help it but um take on the regular work and also have a side hustle and it's it's primarily because well work to uh, work to me is very very monotonous and i can't really express myself greatly creatively as much as i would have liked so which is why i which is why i don't just rely on just work and i mean side hustle money is, is awesome trust me and it has saved me more places than, than i'm willing to admit but more important to me is my ability to to express myself creatively so yeah that is that so um so it, it boils down to how you actually try to manage your time you know what time to do work know what time to actually do side hustle so there was a time where what i usually did was as, as, as soon as i got back from work maybe sometimes around, around like 7 p.m i'll just eat play around sleep wake up dead of the night around to work till around five so like three hours of very intentional work then sleep a little wake up by like 6 37 ish get dressed get back to work the trouble with that is well for me personally was that i effectively stopped sleeping and that was when you have a panic attack so, you know all that, all that well mental health is very very important as a designer very very important always have that in mind all right sure. All right, so what do we have here? Electricity, electricity, electricity by Wola Thomas. Mr. Wola Thomas. This Saturday is election. Go and vote out the person who's responsible for your problems. <laughs> okay. Um, Olaleya Idri says, my lack of funds to help my creative journey, I think lack of clients is the cause. Well, I, I don't know. Maybe you should build up your, you should focus on, you should focus on building up yourself first. You know, build up your capacity to provide value and when people can identify the value that you're providing, then they will patronize you. But until then, build up yourself first. It also helps if clients are incoming. It gives you enough time for you for you to actually develop and to work on case studies because in the event that you don't have the necessary experience those are the things that will speak on your behalf because when you're presenting case studies to clients and to people um they, they pay attention to the small details and to how deliberate you are in your execution so you got you've got to look at that as well um so someone was asking if there were dedicated professional design institutions in Nigeria and I think I cleared that so you have Orange Academy you have Oto Academy you have Doody Tunes you have um, you have um, James Abinibi Academy I think he's I hope he's still running that I'll probably have to check with him but he's still I, I said the last time I checked I I, said, I hope he's still running that let's, let's, let's just leave it at that 
Um, let's see, were there, were there other comments? Oh yeah, then I think Stuturn also also has um, ha has uh, training. There, there are some of them like smaller small scale workshops that you can actually attend. People that uh, with regards to graphic design and visual design. So you just have to follow. You just have to you know put your posts on social media and um, know when these things actually know when these things actually pop out or come come up and then try to actually attend them i know a couple of designers that actually organize product design uh workshops i think sync um think senpai is currently doing a track on ui ux design i think they started on monday think senpai i'll i'll, I'll do my best to include the link in, you know in the um in the video description there so that's that's that about that majorly, majorly yeah. so a lot of people actually um yorks just being yorks basically yeah all right so th this this comment is by chris phillips and he said he said he said i went to ucla for graphic design and i can tell you that the best part <clears throat> And the best part about college is only the networks. Everything else you can learn on your own by yourself. You were born talented. School doesn't make you talented. I highly recommend people teach themselves via Google, YouTube, and pay others online who know what they're talking about. As to why I haven't seen them like this is a mystery. So, there we go. Not having a good system or a Wacom, uh, Wacom graphic pad. Okay, so, um, so it depends on who or the. I mean, it depends on the kind of industry that you're in. You don't necessarily need a Wacom. Logo designers need Wacoms. UX designers not so much. You know, uh, digital painters need need Wacoms. Illustrators need Wacoms. Um, some graphic designers are actually okay with regular mouse. Or just trackpad, but you do not necessarily like be uh, a Wacom. But if you're starting out, your first, your first, your first, the first set of things you should. Hmm. All right. So let me put it this way: when you're starting out, a Wacom is nice to have, but it's not a necessity. You you can do well without it. You can do well without it. All right, so moving on. Personnel, skilled support, skilled and trusted supporting hand. Ha, 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 ha. I suspect this person is a business owner. So, well, finding competent hands is hard. Which is why, and I'm going to shamelessly plug myself here, which is why I went ahead and created the design, the design job caster platform where we could actually have like very fireable competent hands who are ready and willing to work and provide you know provide solutions to your hiring needs i'll post a link to that below as well <clears throat> pricing clients can really kill creativity that's when it comes to pricing man there, there is so much to talk about pricing man and there are like various diverse views so but i will just help try help narrow it down some people some people try to price based on time spent uh, that's a number of uh, amount of uh, hours excuse me hours spent on a particular project some some charge per hour some charge um per week some charge monthly some charge a flat rate um some charge based on perceived value so the the, the all, all these are, are like various uh charging um ability strategies or pricing strategies and I don't think that this video is would allow me really elaborate on on a lot of them, but what I do personally is I charge based on value, and I also factor in a few other things like because you have to factor in things like like resources that you invest whenever it is you're working for someone. Consider light, consider internet, consider yourself because you are like the most important resource. 
Um, if anything happens to you or any of your gear, I mean, you're in trouble and clearly you'll be unable to deliver. So whatever it is that you're working on has to be able to cover for all of these things and then add tax, 10%, just in case. <laughs> color combination. Yeah, color combination is mad. Now nah, this one, this one, this one is on you. I think you should just go and focus on um, reading up color theories and how to actually mix colors in, in projects, either in logos or in paintings or design work or whatever. You need to know what each colors actually represent and signify. I need to know what colors to use to to elicit a certain emotion towards a, a, maybe a work of art or, or, or a visual or um, or a brand identity, for example. So take your time and um, you know go learn some more about the color theory. That was by Presh Wilson. All right, let's see. Um, Electricity, I already addressed that. Make sure you vote out the person who is responsible for your miseries. Low PC capacity, I believe I've addressed that. Save as much money as you can to get a proper PC. Low clients, market yourself well. Um, have a ready portfolio you can sell. Clients not paying well enough. Yes, clients not paying, paying well enough usually boils uh, down to two things. A, because you probably have some power work. Or B, you don't have enough confidence in your work. And you undercharge. So for A, raise a level up. Basically, it's straight and simple. Do all you can to level up. For B, it's now B is um, this. This is a lot personal because for a while I actually did this. I wasn't too confident in the quality of work I was actually outputting. I knew I was good. I knew I was damn good. But when it came to pricing and all that, I was pretty pretty shy. But over time, you just need to start stealing your nerves and making sure that look. People will pay for value because I'm not just providing visuals. I'm also providing value and I have demonstrated value. So people who are not just paying for, for this, people are paying for the value that I'm providing their business or they are providing their events or I'm providing their, their vision or their end goal. So that is what they are paying for. And as long as you're able to deliver on value, clients will not have problems paying you like, you know, good money. So that's that for that. Ah, yes, the issue of non-paying clients. Sometimes I just feel like telling them I am not doing again. When I hear things like, ah, it's too expensive. It's not ordinary logo. Ah, okay. Ah. <laughs> okay, um, so this is from Bio. Mm. This is from Bio David Tim Tobiloba. Uh, Same guy, man, he does have a lot of questions. So, um, non-paying clients are a different story. So if, for example, now you don't work for a client and you're refusing to pay, pay your money, here's how I usually handle them. Most of the time, in, before you even begin anybody's work, collect an advance. Collect a 50% 50, 50 advance. There are several people that suggest 40. There are some people that collect 70 upfront. All of this is to ensure that the client is invested in you so that it's not like you know you, you, you know um, you've done all, all your design work you've already done everything and then client looks at it and is like, ah, I don't like this I'm not feeling it who's gonna pay you pay you for the internet you used who's going to pay for your time who's gonna pay for your electricity it's supposed to be the client so that's why it's important that you know you collect an upfront before you even do anything hold me that straight up Open your eyes, shine it well. Open that. Then um, also, if you're a freelancer or you're an entrepreneur, it also helps to actually have like the right software to help you to um, document or to help your business basically. So I use for me, I just use mostly an invoicing app called Wave Apps. Uh, Wave Apps is very very key. Uh, I use Trello to actually manage projects, uh, projects. But if my client is unable to use Trello, I try to build out from my um, Google spreadsheets. Always have um, a place where you keep all your briefs. You know, I, I, granted, no two briefs are exactly the same, but for the most of the time, they are usually familiar. So the briefs are very important because they give you like a scope of all the things that the client wants. And as we are executing, just ensure that 
you have like a, a checklist that you the client has access to so as it as you are executing you're checking them out and the client is approving and that you know that's that about that um then for people who say um ah it's too expensive it's not ordinary logo i think that boils down to you being able to educate them and show them the value of having you know or, 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 of of placing a premium on their brand identity and if they are unable to don't come down to their level let them go believe you me when they go out there and they spend a lot of money on cheap cheap services they'll come back to you that is the honest truth they'll come back to you all right this is from chisom favor clients that insist on out on, on outdated kind of designs seriously those people can drastically reduce your iq one met me today for a letter here, but I didn't look at his sample twice before rejecting the job. If people ask who did, did this, he will boldly call my name. Ah. Again, this boils down to client education or re-education. You have to demonstrate to the client that, look, um, this thing that I'm doing, this thing I'm doing, this is the quality that is outside. This is an international quality. Do you not want to like? Do you not want a quality better than this? Instead of this fraudulent behavior that you are carrying in your hand, like I said, demonstrate quality or demonstrate value, and you know the rest will follow. All right. So uh, Michael M G Johnson actually recommends the Future dot com, the Future Future. future, future Future, future, future. The future without the e.com is by the. It's by Chris Dew. Yeah, they're amazing. Like the super amazing Chris Dew. Like oh God Almighty, guys. I I literally live in a WhatsApp group of people that kiss that guy's ass. Ugh. Fuck. All right. Cartoon designs and the pen tool. Ha 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 ha. Yes, first of all, this shit that you people call cartoon design is called vectoring. And you. Alright, happy thoughts. Vectoring and the pen tool. Now, the pen tool in Photoshop is, it, is works a lot differently from the pen tool in Illustrator. The pen tool in Photoshop was easy for me to grasp. But it took me exactly two years to fully understand how the pen tool in Illustrator actually worked. You know. But it boils, down, it boils down back to my first advice keep practicing. Keep working on it till you are sure you're good at it. That's that. Basic computer and some tools. I've started that. Basically, getting the right hardware and software. Man. So, getting the right hardware. Hardware you can save up for it. Same thing with software. But the truth of the matter is, getting software in Nigeria, licensed software in Nigeria is very expensive. And if you were to focus on just licensed software, you will not be in business at all. You would not be in business at all. You know, so the best I can actually offer, uh, I can actually add, the best I can ask you to do is look for free alternatives. So in cases of Sketch, if you're if you're a product designer using Sketch, there is Figma, there is uh, Gravit, there's Gravit Designer as well. If you're using Photoshop, there is Affinity Design. Now that that one you pay once and be happy. But there are also other really really awesome software tools and um, um, visual editing tools that you can actually use. That will not burn a hole through your pocket if you're into photography well i don't know much about photography to be told thankfully we even got like we got like a camera at work so i'm trying to learn that and like get tutorials on that <laughs> but let's see how that goes all right so um basically whatever tools that are too expensive for you to 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 pay for or services that are too expensive for you to pay for there are just as many or twice as many free alternatives online. Look for them and start using them to your own benefit. Um, a personal computer and encouraging persons. Well, so this is what this is um, a personal computer. Like I already addressed before. I I I used to be, and I still am of the opinion that being a visual designer or being a designer generally is not for the faint of heart. If you cannot motivate yourself, if you cannot motivate yourself, don't. Come online and start looking for pity parties or people that will pat you on the back and give you digital high, high fives. You did it, boy. 
Nice design. Thank you. I'm trying. I'm just learning. Awesome shit, man. No. No, 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 no. If you want to be a professional, you have to put your eyes down and you have to dig deep within yourself and fucking design. That is it. That is just it. There is no two ways about it. You would... I mean, definitely there will be people who who you, who you look up to. And should be told, your own people who you call your mentors will also not have time because they also have to struggle. They also have to hustle. They have things that they're dealing with, things that they're doing, you know. But I think if you, you can develop, like, a healthy relationship with them whereby you do things and they help you, like, review and they, like, like, I, and they point, out, uh, point out things to you, you can actually reach out to me. <clears throat> and I'll be more than happy to be a guide and a mentor. There are several other mentors within our industry space. Just reach out to them and I promise you they'll be more than happy to help. Don't Just don't expect like one-on-one -on -one coaching with them. Yeah, really, not a lot of people have that time. That's all I think. So, let's see. Um, industry orientation, no eye for details. God damn it, man. Alright, so this one basically just rests with every other person. So you make sure that whatever it is that you're doing, you always make sure you add detail. It depends on the level of detail that you actually put. That I actually put. So you take out more time to actually flesh out, give your work more detail, make it more unique. Because the level of detail that you actually put in your work that shows the thinking that the, the, the thought process, the philosophy, the thinking that actually went into, into its production. Uh, yeah, pretty much. So that's that. Ah, oh, God. I'm not even going to. Uh, Olushe, uh, a tutorial on how to use graphics tab. Oh, no, I'm not even. So, someone here says, this is Olu Afemi, says, I really have a passion for graphic design, but considering my work in the past, I feel I'm not creative enough. Femi, everyone is creative. Just keep practicing and stop being... <laughs> Everyone is creative, you know. Just keep at it, okay? Don't, don't even. Yucks. How to have thirty billion in the account, nigga? Really, 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 nigga. Really, nigga. Lack of equipment, you know. Money that solves that. A place to be more professionally developed. All right, so um, you have to determine if you're a classroom kind of person or if you're a self-talk kind of person or you can do it yourself or DIY kind of person. So I'm a DIY kind of person, so I didn't really go. I, the only formal education I ever had with regards to design was when I was starting, and that was like a, um, a very, very local design school. So it was like donkey years ago, um, 2000, I believe, maybe 2000, 2000 and yeah 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 this was like around 2002 yeah pretty much um so you, you you've got to, you've got to know if, if you're someone who actually functions well in a classroom environment or with one-on-one -on -one coaching you have to look for people who will provide that service for you and you have to be ready to pay for their time but if you are a DIY kind of person like me, man, you dive and you get all the resources and get your shit done. All right. So someone says, being looked down upon by so-called big shots, they feel too big to answer simple how can I questions. Huh. I think I'm just going to sit down and just read Yox's response to this one. <sighs> I probably need a green hat for this too. Ismail Damlola, <coughs> Ismail Damlola Jaoba. This is entitlement attitude. Nobody is looking down at you. I used to be like that when I started to till experience explained better to me. Is it someone that is, is it somebody that is battling to big a deadline that you want to come and sit down and be answering how can I that is already on Google or YouTube? If you're going to ask someone who doesn't know you from Adam a question, make sure that it's something. It's make sure it's not something basic that you can get from Google. Anyway, I've asked some of the two big people some of your how can I questions, and then he plugs his book, which again I will also include 
in the description below. All right, man. Clients not being able to fulfill their own part of the deal in terms of payment. Well, usually it always helps to document things. Uh, what I mean by documents, everyone is, let's say for example, everyone's agreement on how much they're going to be paid. Everyone has signed the NDA, you sent your invoice, which is also very important. Um, and you, you, sent, you sent receipts and all that. So it's also important for you to actually have a lawyer on, on ground. So in the moment they begin to falter on payments, you start, you know, you start swinging the long arm of the law around. And let's see how that thing is effective. That kind of thing. Also, there's a tactic that someone em employed. So someone uh, someone released, I don't know, I think it's a JavaScript library, a CSS library that you can include on the client's website. So if he doesn't pay, you just trigger it and then every day for like five seven for a week the site begins to dim until it's gone until it's like all black it's there but there's there's a library that's just hiding it i i think that's like super cool <laughs> <clears throat> so um what else oh yeah so um kingdom as as he as he be, Sorry, man. He says, Leslie Williams, the fact that Nigerians don't like good designs, they like the Nigerian design per se. You design something good and clean, and they say they don't like it. And Yorks actually provides a very, very sensible you know, answer to you. He says, A, not true. Very important. First of all, assess the type of clients that you're dealing with. Very important. Secondly, present the design in real life situations, meaning present mock ups. Present your designs in regular mock -ups. so if you're doing lo like a logo so it kind of helps if you're going to put like uh what's it called you, you put like um you put your logo put the logo on on the god i've run out of words <laughs> put on, on the letter here you put it on a business card you put it on a van you, you know relevant mock-ups are actually relevant to your client's business and you explain the rationale behind why it works no more good to you good YouTube tutorials, fam man. You haven't searched well enough. I've lived on this internet long enough. There are tutorials for everything. Now you just no, no just ready to look. So, I. So, so someone here say said King Danny the second. The clients that have lots of correction, even though the job is extremely dope. Now you need to remove your mind from that mentality that you know. You're not the one who had, I mean, you know, yes, that this is good looking, but I'm probably like your friends have actually your older designer friends. I'm like, oh, that the people have said that, yeah, this, this, this work is dope, but it's your client's approval that matters at the end. Because if you think it's dope and the client doesn't think it's dope, then man, what are you now doing? So it, like I said, it's the, it's the client's approval at the end of the day that actually matters in this case. Once the client says that, yes, this is dope, then it is dope until then it's just dope in your head all right so i think i have um, answered sufficiently to the best of my ability every question on this thread um so yeah that's that's it thank you for sticking around with me um a few announcements i did say that oh my god i have no battery Yeah, so uh, I've got a couple of announcements. So um, moving forward, I would like to actually review some um, portfolio design, portfolio designers' work. You know, I'll probably just create like take out my, maybe like one or two videos per month to just review work from creatives. Maybe just two per time, and just maybe just review their portfolio and go through some of the things that they actually done, and maybe even explore their. Um, their style of thinking or their process flow just nitpicking occasionally i will do it with someone with some of my friends i think um terry poke he's a, he's a product designer at team apps he will he has agreed to work with me on that um who else who else who else who else who else who else, who else, who else? Uh, i think early early has also agreed um to be on that so and I've so far I've like received like some four five submissions so far 
and I so I expect to start recording as from next week. Um, <clears throat> so that's that about that. Another thing, um, so coming up with content ideas and content cre content creation is very very difficult, and um, and I always want a situation whereby I want you guys, my viewers, my audience, my friends, to have the best quality content when it comes to design, unfiltered, unbiased, like you're getting the you're sure of getting the good stuff all the time instead of peddling like very <sighs> moving on i always want to ensure that you get the good stuff all the time and sometimes that is pretty pretty difficult when it comes especially when it comes to scheduling and timing and then equipment i need equipment to produce top-notch quality tutorials and top-notch quality videos so I would really appreciate if you could donate and uh, support my work there is a link to support my work in the description below you can support either via wallet.ng which is for Nigerians or from patreon for you know the more foreign audience patreon also allows you to support my work on a monthly basis so probably like charge you or something I mean that's like super awesome to me but allows you to support my work on a monthly basis also um, if you want to, if you want to give like a one-off donation, the wallet or ng um, payment platform is more than sufficient. All links are in the description below. Thank you very much for coming to my TED talk, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Be good, always be creative. Bye bye.